So first, what is chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine? Well, these two drugs have become very popular since President Donald Trump claimed and reported that these two drugs have been FDA approved against COVID-19 or to be given to patients with COVID-19. So first I want to clarify these two drugs are not FDA approved. These are not FDA approved drugs for COVID-19 or to be given to patients with COVID-19. However, these two drugs are FDA approved for some other indication, for example, rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. That means that doctors can use um, hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine to be given to patients with COVID-19 based on their best judgment. However, that use will be considered as off-label use. Both chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine are anti-malarial drugs which have been around since 1930s. So these drugs are used to, against malaria all around the world since 1930s. What's the evidence behind hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine to be used in COVID-19 patients? Well, first of all, before I present some evidence to you, I would like to clarify that none of the studies that I'm going to present to you um, are double-blind randomized controlled trial which is what is required generally by FDA or other uh, approval agencies around the world to consider a drug effective for a particular condition. So none of the studies I'm going to be talking about today is has that level of evidence. However, I will present some evidence in front of you. First of all, I will present in front of you a French study by Dr. Philippe Gautre published on March 20th, 2020. In this study, they compared 20 patients who were given hydroxychloroquine at a dose of 200 milligrams three times a day as compared to 16 patients who were not given this drug. In addition to patients who got 20 patients who got hydroxychloroquine, six of them in addition also got a common antibacterial drug called azithromycin or commonly we call in US as z -Pack, which was given at 500 milligram on a day one, followed by 250 milligram for the next four days, once a day. This graph represents the main results of the study. As you can see on the y-axis, we have percentage of patients who are positive with COVID-19. And on the x-axis, we have number of days since giving hydroxychloroquine. As you can also see, the green line represents hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine combination, which was given in six patients. And the blue line represents the patient who only got hydroxychloroquine, which were 14 patients. And then the black line represents the controls, basically the patients who did not get either of the two drugs. As you can appreciate, the patients who got hydroxychloroquine and, and azithromycin showed significant response and almost all of them got free of COVID-19 in about five days. As compared to hydroxychloroquine, which was also far better than not getting hydroxychloroquine. So overall, 70% of patients who got either hydroxychloroquine alone or a combination of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin improved as compared to only 12% when they did not get either of these two drugs. Now, most of these patients who got these drugs were symptomatic. About 80 to 90 percent of these patients were symptomatic. And authors also claim that the drug effect seems to be more in patients who are at symptomatic stage as compared to patients, about 10 to 20 percent patients who were in asymptomatic stage. The second study I'm reporting today is basically a narrative by Chinese author that reported State Council of China has indicated chloroquine phosphate to be markedly effective with acceptable safety in treatment of COVID-19 associated pneumonia based on multiple uh, multi-center clinical trials conducted across China. This study reported that more than 100 patients data demonstrated that chloroquine phosphate is superior to control in the treatment of COVID-19 pneumonia as well as making patients virus free and shortening the course of illness. They further report that they have recommended the inclusion of this drug in the next guidelines for prevention, diagnosis and treatment of pneumonia caused by COVID-19 
issued by National Health Commission of People's Republic of China. However, the problem is that the authors don't provide any data on those more than 100 patients that were treated with chloroquine phosphate in this study. The third report also comes from China, where various doctors or experts in COVID-19 uh, got together and came up with a consensus statement on this disease. <clears throat> These authors concluded that chloroquine significantly improved the success rate of treatment, shortens the hospital stay, and improved patients' outcome. They further recommend that chloroquine phosphate 500 mg twice a day should be given for 10 days in patients diagnosed with mild, moderate, and severe cases of coronavirus or COVID-19 infection, provided there is no contraindication to this drug. The fourth report on this comes from scientists working in a laboratory condition. They showed that chloroquine successfully inhibited the replication of this virus. Now, in addition to these reports, the Dutch Center of Disease Control and Italian Society of Infectious Diseases also recommend using chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine in patients with COVID-19 infection. Now, after these positive reports, I want to present to you a negative report on this, which also comes from Chinese uh, doctors and is also a controlled trial. This new study was led by Shanghai Public Health Clinical Center in China. It involved 30 patients who were hospitalized with confirmed COVID-19 infection. Half of the patients received 400 milligrams of hydroxychloroquine a day for five days along with usual care, whereas other half only received the usual care, which served as a control group. Now, as per the results reported, 93% of patients in the control group were tested negative for COVID-19 at seven days as compared to 87% patients in hydroxychloroquine group. That demonstrate that there was no significant advantage of using hydroxychloroquine over the usual care. But there's a catch. First, the usual care involved not only supportive care like ventilator, oxygen, uh, fluids and other, other uh, supportive care, but also included giving antiviral drug to both the groups, control groups, as well as hydroxychloroquine group. Now, any scientists know that it is very difficult to show improvement on an already effective treatment. So if you're giving strong antiviral drugs to both the groups, it is possible that even though hydroxychloroquine was effective, it could not demonstrate that effectiveness given both the groups were otherwise given excellent treatment. The point we need to remember is that these antiviral drugs are not available all across the world. In poorer countries, antiviral drugs are very expensive, whereas hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine are relatively cheaper drugs. <clears throat> so even though it's a negative study, my take on it is that both the group got otherwise very effective drug, making it very difficult for hydroxychloroquine to show any superiority over the control group. My overall conclusion of all the evidence presented is that these drugs could be effective in patients with COVID-19 and perhaps given the low uh, burden um, economically, uh, it, I mean, because it's a cheaper drug and also um, uh, side effect profile of these drugs are excellent. Based on that, these drugs could be used under doctor's guidance in COVID-19 patients. With that, I hope that FDA and other agencies around the world are trying to study this with much better scientific evidence to prove it or disapprove the role of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine in COVID-19 infection.